Welcome to episode six of my rune series. Tonight we are covering Kanaz, also known as the Ken rune. Quick and to the point, Kanaz means torch. This is another one that's gonna be pretty straightforward and simple. Most of us can easily think of a lit torch and figure out what symbolically that can stand for. But let's go ahead and take a look. A torch lit with fire is a provider of warmth, light, and protection. It keeps darkness at bay. Kanaz is a room of hearth and home, hospitality and caregiving. But thinking deeper on fire and torches, they guide with light. They provide a source of light to illuminate the path ahead of you. So this is also a rune of intellectual enlightenment. Ancient civilizations also used to use torches in ritual, as some people still do nowadays. So it is also a rune of spiritual enlightenment just as much as it is for intellectual enlightenment. In addition, and this is also kind of just a fun fact, the ancient Norse used to claim a prophet Property by walking around the perimeter of it carrying a fire, typically in the form of a torch. This would not only establish a legal boundary of the property, but it was also a religious ritual. Kanaz is also a rune of creativity, as well as creation and transformation in the form of a forge. Forges are used to unmake something in order to create something new. Fire is also linked with purification, both symbolically, but also if you consider cauterizing a wound to both sanitize it and close it, or a fever going up in order to fight an infection. Fire, of course, is also related to sexuality and the sex drive. Thinking about both of those things, you can consider the physical embodiment of fire, body heat, stamina, health, and healing. These are all associated with kanaz. However, while fire can help purify, it can help heal, it can help sustain life through warmth and providing protection in the form of light, it can also destroy but that's only if you let it get out of control. And like I've been saying, kanaz means torch. So a torch in and of itself is a small, contained, and controlled fire. So while this rune seems simple, which I mean, compared to a lot of them, it is. It is one that in particular, you really need to read it in the context of the other runes surrounding them, or surrounding it rather. I know I say that every video, read it in context, read it in context, but this one in particular can be tricky if you just read it as torch, because torch can mean so many different things. So it could stand symbolically for purifying force just as easily as it could stand for mystical illumination or creative work. I mean, you wouldn't want to read it as destruction for the sake of creation when it's actually jumping out at you to say hospitality. So just keep all of these possibilities in mind during a reading. It also stands for clarity of mind or insight, or it could be a warning for distress or illness that will worsen if you don't check on it, if you don't treat it, if you don't illuminate it. Now in spell work, this is a great one to use. Kanaz can be used as a beacon of light to draw good things to you or into your life. Or if perhaps you're doing a truth spell or something to reveal something else to you, it can be used as a light to guide you, to illuminate problems or a certain situation ahead of you, or one that you're currently in, of course. All right, folks, that wraps up Kanaz. If you have missed any part of this series and you are, you know, new to this one, the link for the full playlist is down below, including an introductory video talking about how to charge your own runes, how to cast them and all that fun stuff. As always, I'm just a little clickety clack on the keyboard away, either through email, Instagram, or of course, leaving something in the comments below. Hit a thumbs up if you are enjoying the rune series. And if you're brand new, subscribe button is over here. And there's also one below the video. All right, my lovelies, I'm signing off for today. I will talk to you all soon.